Hi, this time I wanted to tell you how to use text maps in your tabletop RPGs. That is, as a game master or dungeon master, depending on the situation, sometimes you may find it more useful to map things out using text instead of, you know, the typical squares and circles that you use to map different adventure sites different zones. You can also use this when it comes to running wilderness adventures in cities. It's very easy to do and it could be a lifesaver uh, in order for you not to constantly look things up. Okay, you need obviously a, a, a notebook, but now specifically you need a, a notebook for this, you, your typical notebook. And in this area down here, you're going to be mapping things. In this area over here, you're going to be writing notes. Mm, something fell off. What's this? Oh. Okay. <laughs> so, maybe the lighting. Hopefully this video won't get uh, too choppy. Well, I care about the sound. The video is probably, the quality of the moving image is probably going to be affected. But, well, when it comes to this section over here, this is all about, like, the information, the a more extensive information concerning the map. You could consider it like map keys, but you will see that that is not necessary. And here in this other area, another... <laughs> in this other area, you're going to be uh, mapping things, but through text. And how do you do this? Well, let's say that you, the characters are exploring these ruins or mansion or whatever. In that case, maybe you write dungeon entrance. And you make a few notes, the dimensions of the dungeon entrance, like, oh, 30 by 40 feet room. And when it comes to details of the ceiling, I would recommend that you either memorize those or you make like some very tiny notes on the side. And you could write something like containing chair and table and empty. So the entrance of the dungeon only has a chair and a table and it's empty, but you make like those little notes here. And then you connect those uh, notes with other notes that you make using lines. Instead of corridors or drawing the entire corridor, you could make a simple line connecting uh, that text with other text. So each of the different rooms or sites or zones, it could be used in the wilderness, in the cities, like I mentioned, in towns. The connections, the roads, the paths, anything, they, they are basically lines. So you, you have something written and it connects to another room, just make a line. If there is some sort of feature to that connecting corridor, just make a small note on the side. And then you write the next room, like maybe it's like um, the killing room. For whatever reason, it's the killing room. And you write 40 by 50 feet in dimensions blood all over the place there are bones in the middle and there is a perhaps a couple of zombies maybe there are corpses in the killing room and they rise and that's your all the information that you need you don't need to look up oh i'm going to look to this other side or this other book or even on the same page to see what's in that room it's all here it's all here so you're going to be mapping the entire thing the entire place by making small notes and you're going to be connecting those small notes with lines. If you need to flip the page, oh, I need to flip it over here because maybe it's a two story building or maybe the first, the ground floor is just huge. It's big. So it's not going to fit into a single page. You can make like a small note over here. And when you flip the page, the connecting node, maybe you use like A. A connects with A on this other page. And now you know that characters use this spiral staircase to go up. So it's very simple. You have the spiral staircase here for the ground floor. Now they go to the second floor. You wrote A. A means a spiral staircase. And look, it's right here. So it's very easy for you to, to keep track of things. And when it comes, like I said, when the section 
of the dungeon level or whatever is, is too big, you can also find ways to connect it with simple letters or whatever. So that you, when you flip, maybe you just have to rem remind yourself or remember that when you write A here, you only you flip this and it's going to connect over here. So it's as, it's as simple as that. As, sim as simple as that. Now, I mentioned that in this upper part, you can write other information. That is when you have your, your notebook, you can write other things here. I usually write things related to non-player characters. You could use it to have the stat blocks in order for you to not um, to eliminate the need of using other books, other notebooks. You can have all of the stat blocks here or notes on traps if they are quite complex or notes of no on non-player characters. So I always run my games like that. You may have noticed from the, my actual play, I always have like my notebook like this sometimes i only need to read this part when it comes to the map with the layout and other times when i need more information like the agendas of the different non-player characters because in that actual play it is um, improbable not, not likely but still possible that you have many like perhaps 100 events going on at the same time it's not going to be like that of course but there is that small chance so in this section i have all the information concerning the events, the agendas, the information concerning the non-player characters. Maybe I just made an, a small note here. Uh, there is this wizard in this room, but I don't remember. Oh, what was it? Maybe I didn't have... Uh, I forgot to write the name of the wizard here or some traits related to his spells or something. Then I just look it up over here. Oh, yes, he's the wizard. Masmillion, Masmillion the wizard, and he uses fire spells. So it's all about how you are handling things. Use the upper part of the notebook to write stat blocks, agendas, information on non-player characters, wandering or errant non-player characters that are not tied to a particular room or section. You can even write down here, oh, they move through this corridor to this other room, they patrol this area, and reserve this part of the notebook for your map. And like I said, it, it doesn't need to be painstakingly accurate. If, if you want those details, definitely use like a grid notebook. It is just lines, but with a grid, you could make like some very small, more precise not notations, but focus on text. Don't have that dungeon map where you have the, the layout and with some numbers or letters that are keys and you need to look up the information elsewhere. No, just have the basics. This room, uh, 20 by 60 feet, it's a long room, and it contains a chest and an armor rack or a weapons rack. There is this trap and there is this monster. And write it in tiny le letters. And therefore, you won't be, there won't be any need to create this complex dungeon structures and you're wasting so much time because you need to get the dimensions just right so that's just a way of handling things when it comes to when i design dungeons sometimes i take my time i make the rooms following the grid and all of that but sometimes just you're, you're perhaps in a hurry you want to save some time and you want to have those handy references here that that information i oftentimes do that i have these modules, typical Dungeons and Dragons module, I take a look at the map and then mm -mm, I'm going to redo the map. You could be thinking, oh, redo the map, that is going to take so much time now because I'm, I am not drawing the entire complex. I'm just making notes and making sure I understand the connections with the lines. The lines represent the corridors, the connections. You could even like put some door icons if you wish. It's all about that. It's much faster to just like make some notes and you connect and it's more useful in my opinion when it comes to running the game at the table. Maybe you want to handle a combination of both, who knows. Either way, I hope you found this video useful. Like I said, you can apply it to anything, wilderness adventures. Now you make uh, the town of who knows what. It contains these inhabitants uh, and there is a road that leads to the cave of who knows what. There is a monster here. 
or there are no roads, don't write any lines in that case, but you could perhaps make a note, there is a lake or a river between these two zones, and you can handle everything through text. You, you, you um, maybe some of you don't even realize on how fast things flow when you handle this via text in a lot of cases. Well, thank you for watching this video. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know. And thank you so much to those of you that are going the extra mile to support the channel. If anyone else wishes to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. And remember, it is better to roleplay and fail in character than not to roleplay and fail as a player. Once again, thank you and see you later.